Hi guys, my name is Jaime Valencia, I'm part of the PDI Technical Advisors and this is part 2 of Cell Provisioning. In this video I'm going to show you all the CUCM related configuration like the Universal Device Template, the Universal Line Template, how to configure the Cell Provisioning service and also a live demo. I hope this is useful for you. Before we move on, I want to show you that I have started all the services in my IMM present server and that right now the status for the zip trunk is in full service. I'm also going to show you some of the groundwork that I have done before we configure cell provisioning. We're going to system, enterprise parameters. As you can see, I have changed the cluster ID from standalone cluster to test 11. The main reason for doing this is because I'm going to configure ILS between this cluster and two other clusters that I have in my lab. Other thing that I have configured is that I changed, or well, rather I defined the self-care portal, which is going to be CUCM test. And another thing that I changed, and this you would need to adjust depending on the domains that you're going to use on your server, are going to be the organization top-level domain. In this case, it's going to be pdimx.cisco.com, which is the domain in which my server is and under cluster fully qualified domain name. As you can see, I have four domains. These are the domains that I'm going to be managing on this server. I'm going to be managing pdimx.cisco.com, tiamat.com, trivium.com, and slipnet.com. I have also configured the extension mobility service and also the reset pin service. I have also configured the UC services as well and a service profile. The way in which you want to configure this is that you want to configure the phone services in first place, then you want to configure the UC services. Once you have those, you're going to configure the service profile. And then we're going to move on to the universal device template, the universal line template, the user profile, and finally the feature group template. Right now we need to move on to the device template. We go to user management, we go to user phone app, and we go to Universal Device Template. We click on Find, and you should have a couple of them, the one for our registration, and a sample one. Let's take a look at the sample one. As you can see, it has a lot of information. All the settings that you see here are the same one that you could configure for any phone. In here, in the device description, you have the different options that are going to come from LDAP, in this case, the device description is going to be the first name, last name, the product, and the protocol. I'm just going to leave the product. I'm going to take out the protocol. We're going to use the standard zip profile. And in the phone button template, you can choose the universal device template, which is going to have only one directory number. Or you can create under the phone templates one based on the universal device template. In this case, the one that I have created for cell provisioning is going to be a little bit different. Let me show you that. The universal device template that is configured by default has only one line. The one that I configured for cell provisioning has one line, two speed dials, and two BLF speed dials. If you want to push a speed dial for all of the phones that you're going to be using with cell provisioning, this is the way that you want to do it. Now we're going to expand all so you can see the configuration. On the owner, we're going to use the owner of the phone, which is going to be the user ID from the user that is going to get this phone. We're going to leave this all for default. I'm going to enable it for extension mobility. I'm going to configure the column search space, the rerouting and the subscribe. I'm going to use my common device configuration my soft key template and by the way all of the settings that you see here that i already have an option like the common phone profile the column search spaces the device configuration the soft key templates as you can see this is not the regular one all of these i have already configured before i go into this page all the groundwork that you need to do is that you need to configure the basic settings that you could need for any phone if you want to have a special phone profile a device configuration if you want to have a device pool, all of those you need to configure before you go into this page. We're going to line. The line label is going to be the user ID plus the primary extension, the display color ID. As I'm going to be using E164 directory numbers, I'm not going to set anything for the external phone number mask. I do not have this cluster integrated with MediaSense, so I'm not going to choose a recording profile. 
I'm going to set the monitoring cost search space. And I'm also going to subscribe to some of the services that you already have. I'm going to subscribe to extension mobility and to the change credential. We're going to move over. If you're going to use the default URLs for services information directory, you just need to leave here the default. If you're going to change this to something else, you can go ahead and choose Overwrite and type in the value that you want to use. We're going to use the not disturb. We're going to set it to flash only. I do not have a UR right now, so I'm going to leave that blank. The location is correct. I'm going to use the Richardson location and I'm going to use the Richardson media resource group list. And I'm also going to change the name for this one. And we're going to click on save. You will get this success message. And if we go to the list, we will see this template. The next step is to configure the universal line template. We go to user management, user phone that universal line template. We we'll click on find and we're going to find the sample line template. We're also going to change the name for this one. We're going to click on expand all. The line description is going to be the first name, the last name and the user ID. All this information is going to come from LDAP. You will see once we use it. I'm going to choose the route partition. Right now, I do not have any voicemail profiles configured as I do not have a Unity connection, but I do have concert spaces, the alerting name. We're going to use the standard presence group. I do not have any call pickup groups configured. If you already have one or you want to use them, you just need to create them and they will show up in here. You can also configure the MOH settings at the line level in here if you want. Here we have the call forward settings. Right now, as I do not have voicemail, I'm not going to choose it. I'm just going to leave it blank. We have the park monitoring settings, MLPP. We have the whole reversion. We have the enterprise alternate numbers, E164 alternate numbers. And we're going to click on save. You should get the message that the save was successful. Now, the next thing that we need to configure is the user profile. We go to User Management, User Settings, User Profile. There is going to be one that is going to be the standard, the factory default. We're also going to change this. There is no need to create another one unless you need to. And we're going to use the Universal Device Template that we configured. We're also going to use the Universal Line Template. This is where you're going to allow your users to use cell provisioning. We need to click on this option. And I'm going to choose seven devices. We're going to click on save. Once you have done this, we need to go to the feature group template. So we go to user management, user phone that feature group template. We we'll click on find. You're going to have the default one. I'm also going to rename this. I'm going to click on the Enable User for Unified CM IMM Presence. Not all of my users have Exchange accounts, but I'm going to choose this one for the ones that they do have. I'm going to choose the Service Profile that I have created. And this one is going to be for another video. I'm going to enable a user to use Conference now. I'm going to show you how it works in another video. I'm going to allow it to control devices from CDI. I'm going to enable extension mobility cross cluster, mobility, and mobile voice access. I'm also going to adjust the subscribe concert space for the user. And we're going to click on save. The next step in the configuration is going to configure the LDAP integration. We go to system, LDAP, LDAP system. I'm going to enable synchronizing from LDAP. I'm going to use Microsoft AD. And I'm going to sync against the SAMA account name. We click on save. We go back to system, LDAP, LDAP directory. And if we click on find, we should not have any. I'm going to click on that new. If you recall, the OU that I'm going to be using is test. And I'm going to use that in here. 
I'm going to sync user and groups so that we can use them later when we are configuring IAMAN presence and Jabber. And this is very important. In here we can change the mapping for a few of the fields. The one that we are most interested in is the directory URI. We are going to set it to mail. Once we set this to mail, as you recall, I have several domains for this OU. We are going to get four different domains if I sync against the directory URI. And we are also going to use the directory URI as the Jabber ID in Ayaman Presence. We are going to choose the feature group template that we created. I'm going to apply a mask. Since all of my users are 11 digits, I'm going to get 11 X's in here. If you want the new lines, for example, to be just the four last digits, you could just use 4x or any number of x's. You can also change the directory number in here. If you want to use, for example, instead of the value that the users have, you can also do this. And I'm also going to add some control groups to this. The last step is that we are going to use the hostname for our server. Once you have all that information, we are going to click on save. And as you can see, the ad was successful. Now we are going to use the same information for the LDAP authentication. If you get any kind of error message, that means that maybe some of this information is wrong. Only when you get updates successful, the integration has been done successfully. Now we go back and let me show you that right now I do not have any end users. We go back to system, LDAP, LDAP directory, and we're going to do a full sync right now. I do not have a lot of users. If you recall, I only have, I believe, 22 or 20, 23 users. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. And once I have the users, I will show you. All of the users are now end users who are active LDAP synchronous users. One thing that I want to show you is how they should look. They will have all the information and all the configuration that we have on the feature group template something very important. They should have this field, the primary extension, with some information. Right now, as you can see, it has found the primary extension, which is going to be 1469255602 in the internal partition. If we go to core routing and to the directory numbers, we're going to find the directory number for every one of the users that were synced. As you can see the description, it was the first name, last name, and the user ID. This need to be created in order for cell provisioning to work. If these are not created, it will not work. It will also not work if there is no primary extension configured under the user. Also very important, you should have the self-service user ID, and by default, it's going to be their directory number. This is going to be the information that the IBR is going to ask them when they try to register a new phone. And if we go all the way down, we should see the conference now information. As you can see, the user is enabled for conference now. The meeting number is also going to be his directory number, and the admin can configure the access code from this page. The final step before going through the procedure with a device is that we need to configure auto registration. We go to Cisco, Unified CM, click on Find, and we're going to enable auto registration. I'm going to choose the Universal Device Template, online template that I configured, and I'm going to leave a range of about 100 phones, and we're going to click on Save. We are almost done with the configuration. We need to add a CTI route point, and we also need to add a user.
we need to add a directory number to this CTR route point. I'm going to use start 2000. We're going to save this directory number. Once you have your CTR route point and it has a directory number assigned, we need to create an application user. We go to user management, application user, and we're going to create a new one. We click on add new. You need to make sure that it has control of the CTI that we just created. And you will need to add it to a couple of control groups. It requires the standard CTI enabled and a standard CTI allow control of all devices. Then we're going to click on save. The last step in the configuration is that we need to enable self-provisioning. We need to go to user management, self-provisioning. In here we're going to choose if we are going to use authentication or if there is not going to be any authentication required. If you're going to use authentication, it can be via a PIN, the one that you defined for the user, or you can define an authentication code that is going to be defined by the administrator. If we go down on this page, you need to choose the CTR route point that we created. And you will also need to use the application user that we just created. As you can see, it detected that the number is going to be a star 2000. And on this scenario, I'm going to use the pin that was defined for the user. We're going to click on save we're going to get this message that we need to restart right now in order to go ahead with cell provisioning. So we go ahead and click save and restart now. If we go back to the CTR Rotman page, you should see it as register right now. And with this, we have finished with the configuration. Next, we are going to do the demo. And we're going to finally do the demo. As you can see, I have registered my IP communicator with this COCM and I'm going to show you the user that we're going to be using for the test. What we need to do right now is to bring our IP communicator and we're going to dial star 1000. To provision this device, enter your self-provisioning identification number followed by the pound key. You have entered 1469255600002. Press the pound key to confirm or re enter the identification number followed by the pound key. Enter your PIN followed by the pound key. This device will now restart with a new extension. Goodbye. As you can see, the configuration has changed. We changed our directory number to the one that the user should have, along with the line label. If we go back to the configuration, we should see that reflected. The description changed accordingly. It's the first name, last name, and the kind of device, in this case it's a nice Cisco IP communicator, and everything went fine. If we go to the user management, we should be able to find the device associated with the user this time. As you can see, the device shows in the control devices. I'm going to show you the configuration for the device so that you can see how it looks and how it is according to what we configure in the universal device template. We can see the device pool, the common device configuration, the concert space, the media resource group list. The owner user ID has changed as required. In this case, the username is Otis. The rest of the configuration should not have changed. And if we go to the line, this one was already created, but since there was no device, it was not properly associated. Right now, it is associated to the device and it should also be associated to the end user. And here it is. And that was the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope this was useful for you.